Um, so I began my career in public education and I worked with, I, I got a degree in graphic art and then I went back to school and got a degree in special education. Um, and I started, I graduated from college in Kentucky. So everybody's like, what? Kentucky? There's um, more heads state university. Okay. So you know me. <laughs> so I began working in public education and one of my first jobs was in Florence, South Carolina teaching autistic self-contained. Um, I did ages 5 to 12. And I also worked in Greenwood, South Carolina, um, teaching the intellectually disabled. I taught autistic self-contained there also, and I also taught the emotional handicap. Those were the older ones, 18 to 21. Um, so once leaving public education, I also became certified as a certified investigator for an international investment agency um, here in South Carolina. And I also work for youth advocacy programs um, with dealing and handling children who were placed in foster care settings. Uh, then, so over the years, um, many years, I've worked and collaborated with lots of local programs um, serving the intellectually disabled in Greenville area. While working in Greenville, I recognized that there was a population of um, a lot of young adults leaving public education and they were struggling to get into the community, um, struggling to transition into adult life. And I, um, at independent life was kind of one of my ideas that let's work with that population of people that fall through the cracks. Um, I recognized that um, many of them weren't receiving any services because they, were, they weren't meeting or presenting at that level. So, I thought, why can't, we, um, why can't there be a program that meets the needs of those people that fall through the cracks? Um, so, anyways, my PowerPoint will tell a little bit more about what I do. But, so I just touch it? It's magic. I do. <laughs> there you go. So, this is our mission. Um, this is a picture of Ryan because we're tr we are trying to get Ryan to eventually have employment. Um, Ryan has not been employed yet. He'll be 23 years old soon. He's working at the Salvation <coughs> Army one day a week. And the reason that Ryan needs, is using an independent life is he's struggled with a lot of social skills in the workplace. Um, for instance, when they ask him to do something different, Ryan might say, leave me alone. And so we're working on those social skills that when you have, when you have a job, you can't tell the boss to leave you alone. These are some of my topics that I work on. Um, navigating the community and transition and transportation. Um, learning to have like Uber on their and um, Uber or Lyft on their phone so that they can access it independently. Uh, they also are several of them. Now I have a few that drive that I work with, but the ones who don't drive are they have a Greenville Link Pass, so they get a discount at 75 cents to drop to go one way from Simpsonville to downtown. Um, social relationships um, for employment. We also work on training and the social media, cell phones, email. When they have employment, they need to be using their emails, their cell phones. That's how bosses get in touch with them. So we focus on a lot of that. Um, independent living, um, all soft work skills, main, helping to maintain employment. I don't do employment, I might make contacts with somebody in the community, but um, I, one of the things that I started doing was I trained in social mapping, and I love this concept. It's been very effective with a few of the people I work with who have autism. Um, social mapping is focused on social anxiety. Um, so one of the things you start with, and I'll just tell you really quickly, it's, it's, it's literally, you come up with a topic, they decide what the behaviors are or what they're working on, and then they map across, let's see, how does this affect me? How does it affect my, you know, my family? How does it affect friends? What do others think of me when we do social mapping? Um, life coaching, living skills, social boundaries, and self-regulation. I also did a training um, conference on that. I do a book called Five, Five is Against the Law. That sounds weird, but 
several of the older guys that I work with, um, we learn about the different boundaries and regulation um, of behavior in the, in the public places, and it's kind of level one through five on that. So they know a level one is acceptable, a level five can get you arrested. So we do work on those concepts. Okay, this is just a picture of Ryan preparing. Um, we do preparing for employment, and one of the things is he actually has to be able to fill out a, an application to use the Greenville Link bus line independently. Here's Brady. This is the very first day that he took the Green Link bus, and you'll see a video, by himself. He's waiting at the bus stop down in Simpsonville Main Street. Um, he was, I'll, I can't tell you how proud he was of himself. <laughs> So um, before we did all the Brady getting on the bus by himself and meet me downtown, which I told him where to meet me at, at Tropical Grill, we did a lot of training. Um, I even followed the bus around. Um, and then I realized that one day I was following the wrong bus. <laughs> I was like, oh no, I don't think this is his bus. <laughs> so anyhow. Oh, you show that video? No. Yeah, I was. Where'd he go? Well, it comes on the last slide. <laughs> so that's that, that right, right here? Yeah. Here you go. Here you go. All right, let's see if it's going to play. Oh, it's playing <laughs> sideways for some reason. <laughs> Who knows why it's playing sideways? Okay, everybody turn their head like, like this. You have media specials. So here's Brady, as you can see, walking sideways. Yeah. Well, that's amazing. amazing how you can do that, Brady. This is the day he was meeting me. Right, yeah, you're amazing. Yeah. Good training. I'll get it. Why is it doing that? <laughs> so, you could, there was volume two. It's not, oh well, anyways. Anyways, that was Brady. He, I saw him crossing the street. He didn't know I was videotaping him, but he met me at Tropical Grill independently. We're hoping that he, he, one of his goals is he gets a job downtown and uses the bus line. It would be awesome. Anyways. One thing I wanted everybody to, um, these guys that I work with, want them to recognize that um, your community is not just for employment. Everything I do is community-based. We're always in the community. Um, I want them to also recognize they can socialize in the community. They can use their community for fun. And that's kind of the gist of an independent life, um, is being completely based in the community and um, working with people who kind of fall through those cracks. Okay. Are you, That's it. Okay. I'm done. Well, I was going to do an introduction. I'll, I'll do it now, but um, you, you all pretty much know me, Terry Bolda. I'm a job coach, and I, I do this through SOS Healthcare, which is a DDSN service provider based in Myrtle Beach. I work up here with people in Greenville, Spartanburg County. And then I also do it for private pay through engaged employment, my business. So I've been doing this since 2015, the, the job coaching part of it. And then I had the good fortune of joining up with SOS Healthcare, which was uh, November of 17. And with SOS, they have a life skills program in Myrtle Beach that they've been doing for years. And so I'm doing this up here with them. I say, we what about a life skills program? What, what can we do, you know? And so we're trying to develop that here. But in the meantime, I met, and by the way, it's Kara, not Kara. I don't know if Mike's still here, but <coughs> Kara. So I met Kara um, through Brady's mother uh, back in October. And she just said, you gotta go, you know, meet with this lady and that. And I just, for, for what I do, basically, as a job coach, I'm focused on, on the job, the employment, I work with the businesses and all of that. I just don't have time to go as in depth as, as Kara does with these life skills. And I've just seen it's, it's, it's a huge thing, it's a huge need. I'd say it's almost more important than what I'm doing. I would like to like have 10 Karas doing this kind of work because it just sets people up for success once they get to get into a job or employment. There's such a lack, especially with the population I work with. You know, I'd say especially with autism, when you talk about executive function, keeping track of things, 
handling all these different things that we take for granted, that's a huge challenge for somebody with autism. Uh, their mind is just completely different, wired differently. So to have Kara working, and she's been working with Brady, she's working with my son now, and I've seen personally how that's helped him. He's got a job now, he's held it ever since he started working with her. He's, he's, he's been working at the Pearl at Five Forks since November. And he is, he's definitely improving in a lot of different areas. So once I got to experience this, I, you know, talked with Mike, I said, we got to do this joint presentation because, you know, I refer people to her, she can refer people back to me, but they really need to get, get a lot of these things she's doing here. And I'm just really glad that, where'd she go? Well, I'm glad that we've got Kara. So anybody have any questions? <laughs> oh, there you are. Okay. Yeah, she's right here. I, thought, I thought she left or something. Yes. All kinds of questions. One in the back. Um, if an individual wanted to go with Kara, what would they have to do? Yes, yes, it's private pay. But what I found out is that if you do have the community supports waiver, you do get respite care through the waiver, and you could get funding through that respite care part of the community supports waiver. So that is a possibility for people that, that carry the waiver. I'm very individualized, so what I do is when I meet with somebody for the first time, I'm actually meeting with a, a woman now who um, has social anxiety, struggles to keep a job, um, working with her. I, I meet her in the community somewhere. You know, whatever works for her. I like it to be, especially if they have autism, it's great that it's um, quiet because uh, there's a lot of distractions and stuff like that. Um, but I individualize each person. What, they, what you know, what, hey, what, where are we at? What, what are our, what do we need to work on? And my goal is not to, to work with them forever. My goal is to work with them for a short period of time. And then hopefully I do a touch point. Like with Scott, his son, um, I can kind of reduce it. But I feel like sometimes when I reduce it, then something happens. <laughs> and he kind of needs me to come meet with him again. But, but that's okay. Cause I might meet with him for one hour. Do, you know, something on anxiety. Um, navigating emotions is something else that I do with some of the autistic people. So it's been very effective. And I know they're using it in Michigan. They're using it out in California, the social mapping. It's working in the public schools. And I just have to make it more adult. Because some, you know, it can, can be geared toward children, but it's not to make it adult. And is that what age? 